Delta Air Lines, Inc. NYSE, DAL, typically referred to as Delta, is a major American airline, with its headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. The airline, along with its subsidiaries and regional affiliates, operates over 5,400 flights daily and serves an extensive domestic and international network that includes 325 destinations in 52 countries on six continents, as of 31 March 2019. Delta is a founding member of the SkyTeam Airline Alliance. Regional service is operated under the brand name Delta Connection. One of the four remaining legacy carriers, Delta is the sixth oldest operating airline by foundation date, and the oldest airline still operating in the United States. Among predecessors of today's Delta Air Lines, Western Airlines and Northwest Airlines began flying passengers in 1926 and 1927, respectively. Delta has nine hubs, with Atlanta being its largest in terms of total passengers and number of departures. It is the world's second largest airline in terms of scheduled passengers carried, revenue passenger kilometers flown and fleet size. In 2018, Delta ranked number 75 in the Fortune 500 list of the largest American corporations by total revenue. Topic. History Delta Air Lines began as a crop dusting operation called Huff Dallin Dusters, Inc. The company was founded on May 30, 1924, in Macon, Georgia, and moved to Monroe, Louisiana, in 1925. They flew a Huff Dallin Duster, the first true crop duster, designed to combat the boll weevil infestation of cotton crops. Collett E. Woolman, one of the original directors, purchased the company on September 13, 1928, and renamed it Delta Air Service. Service began on June 17, 1929, with the inaugural flight between Dallas, Texas and Jackson, Mississippi. The company recognizes four founders, the principal founder Collett E. Woolman, C. H. McHenry, Travis Oliver, and Malcolm S. Bedenarn. Delta moved its headquarters to its current location in Atlanta in 1941, and continued to grow through the addition of routes and the acquisition of other airlines. It replaced propeller planes with jets in the 1960s and entered international competition to Europe in the 1970s and across the Pacific in the 1980s. In 1997, Delta was the first airline to board more than 100 million passengers in a calendar year. Also this year Delta began an expansion of their international routes into Latin America. Delta's more recent history is marked by its emergence from bankruptcy on April 25, 2007, and the subsequent merger with Northwest Airlines. The merger was announced April 14, 2008, and was set to create the world's largest airline. After approval of the merger on October 29, 2008, Northwest continued to operate as a wholly owned subsidiary of Delta until December 31, 2009, when both carriers' operating certificates were merged the Delta certificate was kept. Delta completed integration with Northwest on January 31, 2010, when their reservation systems and websites were combined, and the Northwest Airlines brand was officially retired. Topic. Destinations and hubs Topic. Destinations As of October 2018, Delta and its worldwide alliance partners operated more than 15,000 flights per day. Delta is the only U.S. carrier that flies to Accra, Copenhagen, Dakar, Dusseldorf, Johannesburg, Lagos, Nice, Ponta Delgada, seasonal, and Stuttgart. In May 2019, Delta Air Lines announced non-stop flight service between New York's JFK International Airport and Mumbai, to begin on December 22, 2019. Topic. Hubs Delta currently has nine hubs. Atlanta, Delta's hub for the Southeast and its main gateway to Latin America and the Caribbean. 
In addition to its corporate headquarters, Delta operates its primary hub in Atlanta as well as Delta TechOps, Delta's primary maintenance base. Boston, Delta's secondary transatlantic hub. It had previously been a hub from the second half of the 20th century through the early 2000s. The present Terminal A was built for Delta's sole use, but following the 2005 bankruptcy, Delta scaled back operations and leased 11 gates in the terminal. Delta subsequently regained all the Terminal A gates and began building up operations in the mid-2010s until declaring it a hub in 2019. Detroit, inherited through the merger with Northwest, Detroit serves as one of Delta's two Midwest hubs. It is the primary Asian gateway for the northeastern United States and it also provides service to many destinations in the Americas and Europe. Los Angeles, Delta's secondary West Coast hub. Delta inherited its LAX hub from Western Airlines, but dismantled it in the mid-1990s, opting to relocate most of those aircraft to the U.S. East Coast. Since then, it has reopened the hub, offering service to Latin America, Asia, Australia and Europe, as well as major domestic bases and West Coast regional destinations. Minneapolis-St. Paul, inherited through the merger with Northwest, Minneapolis-St. Paul serves as one of Delta's two Midwest hubs. Service includes most major Canadian and American metropolitan areas, a number of regional destinations in the Upper Midwest as well as many destinations in Latin America, Europe and Asia. New York JFK, New York City, Delta's primary transatlantic hub. Inherited from its partnership with Pan Am after Pan Am's collapse in 1991. Also offers service on many transcontinental prestige routes to West Coast destinations Los Angeles, San Francisco and Seattle. New York LaGuardia, New York City, Delta's second New York hub. An important domestic hub created as a result of a slot swap with now-defunct U.S. Airways. Delta service at LaGuardia covers numerous East Coast U.S. cities, and a number of regional destinations in the U.S. and Canada. Salt Lake City, Delta inherited Salt Lake City during the Western Airlines merger. Service covers most major U.S. destinations as well as a number of regional destinations in the U.S. and Canada, and select cities in Europe and Hawaii. Seattle, Tacoma, Delta's primary West Coast hub. Delta announced Seattle's hub status in 2014. The hub serves as an international gateway to Asia, and it also serves many major U.S. destinations as well as regional destinations in the Pacific Northwest. Delta started aggressively building its presence in Seattle in 2011, sparking tensions with Seattle-based Alaska Airlines. Topic. Alliance and codeshare agreements Delta was a founding member of the SkyTeam Alliance in 2000, and has codeshare agreements with the following airlines. Topic. Joint ventures In addition to the above codeshares, Delta has also entered into joint ventures with the following airlines. Air France KLM, Alitalia, inherited from the Northwest KLM relationship, which is older than any of the three major airline alliances including Skyteam itself. Delta has a transatlantic joint venture with Air France KLM and Alitalia. The program coordinates transatlantic operations, including ticket pricing, schedules, capacity, and revenue. On January 27, 2012, the European Commission launched an investigation into the impact of the joint venture on competition on the routes that it covers. Virgin Atlantic, on December 11, 2012, Delta announced that it would spend $360 million to acquire the 49% stake in Virgin Atlantic previously held by Singapore Airlines. As a part of this agreement, both airlines would share the costs and revenues from all of the joint venture flights the airlines operated. The two airlines plan to operate a total of 31 round-trip flights between the UK and North America, including nine daily round-trip flights between London Heathrow and New York City airports John F. Kennedy International Airport and Newark Liberty International Airport. 
The two airlines' application for antitrust immunity was granted by the United States Department of Transportation on September 23, 2013. Aeromexico, like its situation with Virgin Atlantic, Delta has built up its shareholding of Mexican flag carrier Aeromexico to 49%, by buying free floating shares from other investors. In 2015, Delta and Aeromexico applied for an immunized joint venture. After two years, the joint venture was approved with two conditions, both airlines had to surrender four slot pairs at John F. Kennedy International Airport and 24 at Mexico City International Airport to competitors, both airports have slot restrictions. The joint venture began in May 2017, which saw Aeromexico move to Delta Gates at both Kennedy and Los Angeles International Airport. Korean Air, in 2016, Delta and Korean Air began to lay the groundwork for a trans-Pacific joint venture to compete against those between American Airlines and Japan Airlines, and United Airlines and All Nippon Airways. Unlike other planned joint ventures, the Delta-Korean Air joint venture was quick to receive approval by both the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Korean Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport. They aim to increase belly cargo cooperation and offer benefits to its customers across one of the most comprehensive route networks in the trans-Pacific market. This joint venture gives Delta and Korean Air's shared customers seamless access to more than 290 destinations in the Americas and more than 80 in Asia. This joint venture officially launched in May 2018, exactly one year after the joint venture with Aeromexico began. WestJet, Delta Air Lines and WestJet operate a codeshare agreement on select routes to expand both airlines' North American operations. On July 19, 2018, WestJet and Delta Air Lines signed a definitive 10-year agreement into a joint venture between the two airlines. This joint venture will serve more than 95% of the Canada-US demand. The airline's current frequent flyer programs will also be updated to be more closely aligned, and the airlines will be co-located at key hub airports. Virgin Australia, in 2017, Delta announced a joint venture with Virgin Australia, strengthening its trans-Pacific network and allowing the carrier to add direct flights between Australia and the United States. Topic fleet As of March 2019, Delta operates a fleet of 885 aircraft manufactured by Airbus, Boeing, and McDonnell Douglas. Delta operates the largest Boeing 717, Boeing 757, Boeing 767, McDonnell Douglas MD-88, and McDonnell Douglas MD-90 fleets in the world, and the largest Airbus A330 fleet of any U.S. airline. Prior to its 2008 merger with Northwest Airlines, Delta's fleet was made up of solely Boeing and McDonnell Douglas aircraft. Airbus aircraft from Northwest joined the fleet after the merger, and more have since been added. Unlike other U.S. legacy carriers, Delta often seeks to acquire and utilize older aircraft, especially narrow bodies, and it has created an extensive MRO maintenance, repair, and overhaul organization, called Techops, to support them. The oldest aircraft in the fleet are the McDonnell Douglas MD-88s, with an average age of over 25 years. However, in early 2011, Delta began talks with Airbus, Boeing and Bombardier to discuss replacing the McDonnell Douglas DC-9s, MD-88s, and older A320 and 757-200 aircraft. On August 22, 2011, Delta placed an order for 100 Boeing 737-900 ER aircraft and deferred an order of 100 small narrow-body jets until 2012. As part of its strategy to utilize less expensive used airplanes, Delta agreed in 2012 to lease 88 Boeing 717s acquired by Southwest Airlines during their acquisition of Airtran Airways. They would be used as replacements for the DC-9 fleet and some 50-seat regional aircraft like the CRJ-100 and minus 200. The first revenue flight was on October 25, 2013. Delta officially retired its last DC-9 on January 6, 2014. It was used on an as-needed basis until January 22, 2014, when the last one was removed from service. Delta was the final U.S. carrier operating the DC-9. 
As a continuation of the narrowbody fleet refresh and expansion, Delta ordered 75 Bombardier CS-100 aircraft and an additional 50 options on April 28, 2016, becoming the first American carrier to order the type. The airline has not been as keen to acquire or operate aging widebody aircraft. On August 1, 2014, Delta announced they would begin to retire their aging Boeing 747-400 fleet, which Delta acquired as part of the Northwest merger. During a 2014 earnings call, CEO Richard Anderson announced that they would be retired by the end of 2017. On November 20, 2014, the airline announced an order for 25 Airbus A350-925 Airbus A330-900 NEO aircraft to replace the 747 fleet as it was retired, as well as some aging 767s. A350 deliveries began in the second quarter of 2017, while the first A330-900 NEO is scheduled for 2019. Delta retired the 747 on January 3, 2018, with its final revenue flight from Seoul Incheon to Detroit DL-158 occurring on December 19, 2017, becoming the last major U.S. airline to fly the 747. On December 14, 2017, Delta ordered 100 Airbus A321 NEOS, with 100 further options for $25.4 billion at list prices, to be delivered from 2020, equipped with Pratt and Whitney PW 1100 Giga Seconds and will be configured with maximum of 197 passengers. They will replace the airline's aging Airbus A319s, Airbus A320s, Boeing 757-200s, MD88s and MD90s. Topic: Cabin Delta underwent a cabin branding upgrade in 2015. The airline now offers or plans to offer six different cabin service options, Delta One, Delta Premium Select, First Class, Comfort Plus, Main Cabin, and Basic Economy. Availability and exact details vary by route and aircraft type. Topic. Delta One. Delta One is the airline's premier business class product, available on long-haul international flights, as well as transcontinental service from New York JFK to Los Angeles and San Francisco. Delta One features lie flat seating on all aircraft types, and direct aisle access from every seat on all types except the Boeing 757-200. The Boeing 767-300ER and Boeing 767-400ER seats, designed by James Thompson, feature a space-saving design whereby the seats are staggered such that when in the fully flat position, the foot of each bed extends under the armrests of the seat in front of it. Delta One cabins on the Boeing 777-200ER, LR fleet are configured in a herringbone layout, while Airbus A330 cabins featuring the Cirrus flatbed sleeper suite by Zodiac Seats US are configured in a reverse herringbone pattern. All seats are also equipped with a personal, on-demand in-flight entertainment IFE system, universal power ports, a movable reading light, and a folding work table. Passengers also receive complimentary chef-curated meals, refreshments, alcoholic beverages, a Tumi Inc. amenity kit, premium bedding, and pre-flight Sky Club access. In August 2016, Delta announced the introduction of Delta One suites on select widebody fleets. The suites will feature a door to the aisle for enhanced privacy, as well as improved storage space, a larger IFE screen, and updated design. The suites will roll out on the Airbus A350 fleet, first delivered in July 2017, followed by installation within the Boeing 777 fleet. Topic. Premium Select In April 2016, Delta CEO Ed Bastian announced that a new premium economy cabin will be added. Since renamed to Premium Select, this cabin will feature extra legroom, adjustable leg rests, extra seat pitch, width, and recline, and a new premium service. 
Delta introduced it on its new Airbus A350, first delivered in fall 2017, and will be followed by the Boeing 777. In October 2018, Delta announced that they would be selling first-class seats on domestically configured Boeing 757 aircraft flying transatlantic routes as premium select. Topic: First class. First class is offered on mainline domestic flights except those featuring Delta One service, select short and medium haul international flights, and Delta Connection aircraft with more than 50 seats. Seats range from 18.5 to 20.75 inches (47.0 to 52.7 centimeters) wide and have between 37 and 40 inches (94 and 102 centimeters) of pitch. Passengers in this class receive a wider variety of free snacks compared to main cabin, as well as free drinks and alcohol, and full meal service on flights 900 miles (1,400 kilometers) and longer. Certain aircraft also feature power ports at each seat and free entertainment products from Delta Studio. First class passengers are also eligible for priority boarding. Topic. Delta Comfort Plus Delta Comfort Plus seats are installed on all aircraft excluding Delta's new A350s and feature 34 to 36 inches 860 to 910 millimeters of pitch on all Delta 1 configured aircraft 35 to 36 inches 890 to 910 millimeters of pitch and 50% more recline over standard main cabin seats. Additional amenities include, sky priority boarding, dedicated overhead space, complimentary beer, wine, and spirits on flights 250 miles 400 kilometers or more, and complimentary premium snacks on flights 900 miles 1,400 kilometers or more. Complimentary premium entertainment is available via Delta Studio, with free headsets available on most flights. On transcontinental flights between JFK LAX, SFO, Delta Comfort Plus passengers also get Luvo snack wraps. Medallion members can upgrade from main cabin to Comfort Plus for free, while other customers can upgrade for a fee or with SkyMiles. <laughs> main cabin Main cabin is available on all aircraft with seats ranging from 17 to 18 inches 43 to 46 centimeters wide and 30 to 33 inches 76 to 84 centimeters of pitch. The main cabin on Boeing 737, 777, and selected Boeing 757 to 200, 767 to 300, and McDonnell Douglas MD-90 aircraft have an articulating seat bottom where the seat bottom moves forward in addition to the seat back tilting backwards when reclining. Main cabin passengers receive complimentary snacks and non-alcoholic drinks on all flights 250 miles, 400 kilometers or longer. Alcoholic beverages are also available for purchase. Complimentary meals and alcoholic drinks are provided on long-haul international flights as well as selected transcontinental domestic flights, such as between New York JFK and Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego. As part of Delta's flight fuel buy on board program, meals are available for purchase on other North American flights 900 miles (1400 kilometers) or longer. Delta operated a different buy on board program between 2003 and 2005. The previous program had items from differing providers depending on the origin and destination of the flight. Prices ranged up to $10, $13 $13.26 when adjusted for inflation. The airline started the service on a few selected flights in July 2003, and the meal service was initially offered on 400 flights. Delta ended this buy on board program in 2005. Instead, Delta began offering snacks at no extra charge on flights over 90 minutes to most U.S. domestic flights and some flights to the Caribbean and Latin America. 
Beginning in mid-March 2005 the airline planned to stop providing pillows on flights within the 48 contiguous U.S. states, Bermuda, Canada, the Caribbean, and Central America. In addition, the airline increased the price of alcoholic beverages on Delta mainline flights from $4, $5.13 when adjusted for inflation to $5, $6.41 when adjusted for inflation. The increase in alcohol prices did not occur on song flights. Topic: <laughs> Basic economy. Basic economy is a basic version of main cabin, offering the same services with fewer flexibility options for a lower price. Examples of fewer flexibility options include no ticket changes, no paid or complimentary upgrades regardless of frequent flyer status, and only having a seat assigned at check-in. Onboard amenities Topic. Wi-Fi On August 5, 2008, Delta announced it would be installing the Aircell mobile broadband network, GoGo, which enables customers traveling with Wi-Fi-enabled devices, such as laptops, smartphones, and tablets, to access the Internet for a fee. GoGo was initially offered on Delta's fleet of McDonnell Douglas MD-88 and MD-90 aircraft but has expanded to the remaining domestic fleet, as well as Delta Connection aircraft with a first-class cabin. Delta has the largest fleet of Wi-Fi equipped aircraft in the world. The airline introduced its first in-flight Wi-Fi on international routes to Tokyo from Los Angeles and Atlanta in March 2014, and stated its intent to offer the service on all transoceanic flight routes by the end of 2015. Even though Delta had announced the retirement of its 747 fleet, all Delta 747s were Wi-Fi equipped before their withdrawal. Delta is currently installing Wi-Fi on the 777 fleet. Topic: In-flight entertainment. Topic: History. In the 1960s, audio programming was introduced where passengers wore headphones consisting of hollow tubes piping in music. These were installed in some Delta aircraft. Some early wide-bodied aircraft, including the Lockheed L-1011, Boeing 767-200, and 767-300 fleet, had movies projected onto the cabin bulkhead. Also during the late 1980s and early 1990s, CRT monitors over the aisles were added to the 757 fleet, making them the first narrowbody aircraft to feature video entertainment. The MD-90 introduced Delta's first IFE system with LCD monitors in 1995, and the 777 introduced Delta's first in-seat video system in 1999, initially using the Rockwell Collins Total Entertainment System. Delta's first all-digital IFE system with a VOD Panasonic EFX was first introduced in 2003 on Delta's former low-cost subsidiary, Song. The Rockwell Collins IFE system on the 777s was replaced by the Panasonic EFX system in 2007, followed by the Panasonic X2 in 2011. The Panasonic EFX and X2 systems are trademarked by Delta as Delta On Demand. In the spring of 2010, Delta installed the Panasonic EFX AVOD system in economy on six 767-300ers that are used on routes that are 12 hours or longer. Delta also announced it would be installing AVOD in economy class on all Boeing 767-300er and 747 aircraft over the next three years. On July 27, 2010, Delta announced that it would be the launch customer of the new X2 AVOD system with the Eco 9i Integrated Smart Monitor, a new ultra lightweight IFE system by Panasonic Avionics Corporation and Zodiac Seats US. 
The systems have been installed on the entire 747 to 400 fleet as of October 2012, and are currently being installed on the 767 to 300 ER fleet, except for the six aircraft previously retrofitted with the EFX system in 2010. A different version of the integrated smart monitor developed by Panasonic Avionics Corporation and B Aerospace was installed on the Airbus A330 fleet. These seats were also installed on all Boeing 757-300, Boeing 737-900ER, Airbus A321 and select Boeing 757-200 domestic aircraft, and replaced the existing seats and monitors on the international Boeing 757-200 fleet. The previous seats on the International 757-200 fleet have been placed on select domestic 757-200 aircraft, mainly ones flying between Hawaii and the U.S. mainland. In 2012, Delta began replacing the overhead CRT monitors on the pre-merger Delta 757-200 fleet with new LCD monitors. This was completed in late 2012. The 767-400ER fleet initially featured LCDs over the aisles, but were replaced in 2009 by the Panasonic EFX AVOD system when the last of the 767-400ERs were converted from domestic to international use. CRT projectors were originally featured in economy class on Boeing 767-300s, with the international 767-300ers also featuring ceiling-mounted CRT displays over the aisles, which have since replaced by LCD monitors, and are now in the process of being converted to the EFX 2A VOD system. When Delta's XTWA ETOPS 757s were first delivered, they featured a system made by Sony Transcom, a former subsidiary of Sony now sold to Rockwell Collins, system that was factory installed for TWA. The system featured overhead drop-down LCD monitors similar to Delta's non-Transcon 737-800s and 757-300s. Delta replaced the Sony Transcom system with the Panasonic EFX system featuring in-seat video and AVOD at the same time as the new business light seats and slimline economy class seats were installed. Topic: <laughs> Current fleet. Audio and video are available on all aircraft except for the McDonnell Douglas MD-88, Boeing 717, MD-90, and Delta Connection aircraft. Boeing 777-200ER, 777-200LR, along with 767-300 and A330 aircraft that have completed cabin modifications, feature the Panasonic X-2 system. Compared to the older EFX system, this offers greater storage capacity, as well as lighter and larger personal video screens. Boeing 767-400ER aircraft, selected 757-200 aircraft, as well as the remaining internationally configured Boeing 767-300ER aircraft that have not completed cabin modifications, use the Panasonic EFX AVOD system. On these 767-300 aircraft, AVOD is available only in the Delta I class, while the system includes overhead LCD monitors and audio programming for passengers seated in the economy cabin. The unmodified Airbus A330 aircraft feature the Panasonic 3000i AVOD system in all cabins. This system includes supplemental LCD monitors over the aisles for displaying the safety video and moving map. Domestic Boeing 767-300s, Boeing 737-700s, as well as selected transcontinental Boeing 757-200s and selected Boeing 737-800s using the Panasonic EFX system, also feature live television via DISH network in both first class and economy. Some Boeing 737-800s, as well as all Boeing 757-300s feature systems with drop-down LCD displays below the overhead bins. All aircraft with a VOD feature Panasonic's iExplore Moving Map program. 
737-800s with overhead video and the coach sections of 767-300ER aircraft with overhead video feature the Rockwell Collins Airshow moving map, which is often shown during takeoff and landing. Other aircraft formerly equipped with the Rockwell Collins Airshow moving map included the Lockheed L-1011-250 and minus 500, McDonnell Douglas MD-11, and Boeing 767-400ER and 777-200ER. The L-1011 and MD-11 fleet have since been retired, while the 767-400ER and 777-200ER have since had their airshow systems replaced by the Panasonic iExplore system built into the EFX and X-2A VOD systems. <laughs> Delta Sky Magazine Delta Sky Magazine and its online edition is an airline magazine published by MSP Communications in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It is available in every seat on all routes. Topic: Reward programs. Topic: Sky Miles. SkyMiles is the frequent flyer program for Delta Air Lines. Miles do not expire. Topic Delta Sky Club Delta Sky Club is the branding name of Delta's airport lounges. Membership is available through an annual membership that can be purchased with either money or miles. International passengers traveling in Delta One class get free access. Membership can also be granted through top-level Delta status or by being an American Express card holder with certain exceptions. As of January, 2019, Delta no longer offers single-day passes, features vary by location, but generally include free drinks including alcoholic beverages, snacks, and reading material. Wi-Fi is free for members and guests and is mostly provided in the U.S. by AT&T. Originally, Delta's membership-based airport clubs were called Crown Room Lounges, with Northwest called World Clubs. Topic: Sky Bonus. On November 27, 2001, Delta Airlines launched Sky Bonus, a program aimed towards small to medium businesses spending between $5,000 and $500,000 annually on air travel. Businesses can earn points toward free travel and upgrades, as well as Sky Club memberships and SkyMiles Silver Medallion status. Points are earned on paid travel based on a variety of fare amount paid, booking code, and place origin or destination. While enrolled businesses are able to earn points toward free travel, the traveling passenger is still eligible to earn SkyMiles during his or her travel. In early 2010, Delta Air Lines merged its SkyBonus program with Northwest Similar Biz Perks program. Topic: <laughs> Corporate Affairs. Topic. Headquarters and offices Delta's corporate headquarters is located on a corporate campus on the northern boundary of Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport, within the city limits of Atlanta. This location has served as Delta's headquarters since 1941, when the company relocated its corporate offices from Monroe, Louisiana to Greater Atlanta. The crop dusting division of Delta remained headquartered in Monroe until Delta ceased crop dusting in 1966. Before 1981, the Delta Corporate Campus, an 80-acre plot of land in proximity to the old Hartsfield Airport Terminal, was outside the city of Atlanta limits in unincorporated Fulton County. On August 3, 1981, the Atlanta City Council approved the annexation of 141 acres 57 hectares of land, an area containing the Delta headquarters. As of 1981 Delta would have had to begin paying $200,000 annually to the City of Atlanta in taxes. 
In September 1981, the airline sued the city, challenging the annexation on the basis of the constitutionality of the 1960 City of Atlanta annexation of the Hartsfield Old Terminal. The City of Atlanta was only permitted to annex areas that are adjacent to areas already in the Atlanta city limits. In addition to hosting Delta's corporate headquarters, Hartsfield Jackson is also the home of Delta Techops, the airline's primary maintenance, repair, and overhaul arm and the largest full service airline MRO in North America, specializing in engines, components, airframe, and line maintenance. Delta maintains a large presence in the Twin Cities, with over 12,000 employees in the region as well as significant corporate support functions housed in the Minneapolis area, including the company's information technology divisional offices. <laughs> <laughs> Finances For the fiscal year 2018, Delta Airlines reported earnings of US$5.1 billion, with an annual revenue of US$44.438 billion, an increase of 8.02% over the previous fiscal cycle. Its shares traded at over $48 per share, and its market capitalization was valued at over US$39.182 billion in April 2019. Topic. Personnel Between its mainline operation and subsidiaries, and as of March 2015, Delta employs nearly 80,000 people. Ed Bastian is the current Chief Executive Officer and has served in this position since May 2, 2016. Joanne Smith is Executive Vice President and Chief Human Resources Officer responsible for the oversight and support of personnel needs at Delta. She was appointed on October 1, 2014, replacing Mike Campbell. Delta's 14,500 mainline pilots are represented by the Airline Pilots Association, International and are the union's largest pilot group. The company's approximately 180 flight dispatchers are represented by the Professional Airline Flight Control Association, PAFCA. Not counting the pilots and flight dispatchers, Delta is the only one of the five largest airlines in the United States, and one of only two in the top nine, the other being JetBlue, whose non-pilot USA domestic staff is entirely non-union. Topic Branding Delta's logo, often called the widget, was originally unveiled in 1959. Its triangle shape is taken from the Greek letter delta, and recalls the airline's origins in the Mississippi Delta. It is also said to be reminiscent of the swept wing design of the DC-8, Delta's first jet aircraft. Delta's current livery is called Upward and Onward. It features a white fuselage with the company's name in blue lettering, and a widget on the vertical stabilizer. Delta introduced its current livery in 2007 as part of a rebranding after it emerged from bankruptcy. The new livery consists of four colors, while the old one, called Colors in Motion, used eight. This meant the switch saved the airline money by removing one day from each aircraft's painting cycle. The airline took four years to repaint all of its aircraft into the current scheme, including aircraft inherited from Northwest Airlines. Topic. Environmental initiatives In 2008, Delta Airlines was given an award from the United States Environmental Protection Agency's Design for the Environment DFE program for their use of Precoat, a more environmentally friendly, non-hexavalent chromium surface pretreatment on its aircraft, replacing hazardous chemicals formerly used to improve paint adhesion and prevent corrosion. In addition, Precoat reduces water usage by two-thirds and reduces wastewater treatment. Precoat is also saving money by reducing the time needed to paint each airplane. With time savings of 8 to 10 percent, it will save an estimated more than $1 million annually. Topic. In popular culture Topic. Deltalina 
As part of the rebranding project, a safety video featuring a flight attendant showed up on YouTube in early 2008, getting over 1 million views and the attention of news outlets, specifically for the video's tone mixed with the serious safety message. The flight attendant, Catherine Lee, was dubbed Deltalina by a member of Flyer Talk for her resemblance to Angelina Jolie. Delta had considered several styles for its current safety video, including animation, before opting for a video presenting a flight attendant speaking to the audience. The video was filmed on a former Song Airlines Boeing 757-200. Topic. Accidents and incidents The following are major accidents and incidents that occurred on Delta mainline aircraft. For Northwest Airlines incidents, see Northwest Airlines accidents and incidents. For Delta Connection incidents, see Delta Connection incidents and accidents. The attempted bombing of Northwest Airlines Flight 253 on December 25, 2009, occurred four days before the operating certificates of Northwest and Delta were combined December 31, 2009. The aircraft involved in the incident was in Delta livery and reported in some early news reports as Delta Flight 253. Topic. Hijackings. There have been over a dozen attempted hijackings that resulted in no injuries and the surrender of the often lone hijacker. These incidents are not included. The following are notable hijackings because of fatalities or success in forcing the aircraft to fly to another country. In 1968, a Delta 608 was hijacked to Havana, Cuba. This was the first successful hijacking to Cuba from the U.S. since 1961, and was the start of multiple hijacking attempts to Cuba in the late 1960s. This coincided with the introduction of passenger screening using metal detectors in U.S. airports starting in the late 1960s. On July 31, 1972, Delta Flight 841, a Detroit to Miami DC-8 flight, was hijacked to Algiers, Algeria by eight hijackers. The aircraft stopped in Boston to pick up an international navigator. The flight was allowed to return with passengers to the U.S., stopping in Barcelona for refueling. On February 22, 1974, Samuel Bick, an unemployed tire salesman from Pennsylvania, shot and killed an aviation police officer, then stormed aboard Delta Air Lines Flight 523, a DC-9 flight at Baltimore Friendship Airport now Baltimore, Washington International Thurgood Marshall Airport scheduled to fly to Atlanta, and shot both pilots, killing the first officer, Fred Jones. He intended to crash the plane into the White House. After shooting the pilots, the hijacker grabbed a passenger and demanded that she fly the aircraft. The passengers meanwhile fled the aircraft. The hijacking attempt ended when, after a standoff with police, Bick was shot twice through an aircraft porthole by a Maryland policeman, severely wounding him. Before police stormed the plane, Bick killed himself. The plane never left the gate during this incident. On August 23, 1980, a Delta Air Lines L-1011 on a San Juan to Los Angeles flight was hijacked and flown to Cuba. The hijacker was jailed by Cuban authorities, and all passengers were released unharmed. On September 13, 1980, a Delta Air Lines New Orleans to Atlanta flight was taken over by two hijackers and forced to fly to Cuba. The flight continued to Atlanta after stopping in Havana. The hijackers were imprisoned by Cuban authorities. One hijacker was released and later sought U.S. residency. The suspect was later arrested by U.S. authorities in 2002 and sentenced to 10 years in prison the following year. Additional hijackings that resulted in no injuries and the flight landing in Cuba include March 28, 1984, Delta 357, a 727, New Orleans, Dallas, August 18, 1983, Delta 784, a 727, Miami, Tampa, July 17, 1983, Delta 722, a 727, Miami, Tampa, and June 11, 1979, Delta 1061, a L10 New York LaGuardia Fort Lauderdale.
Topic. See also. Air transportation in the United States. Delta Flight Museum. Delta Global Staffing. List of airlines of the United States. List of airports in the United States. Transportation in the United States. Delta Ship 41.